How do you determine a benign skin lesion from a skin cancer? In the past 11 years, I've specialized in dermatology and skin lesion recognition, seeing over 40,000 patients who have sought the answer to this very question. By the end of this video, you'll be able to understand what are the most common skin lesions, both benign and malignant. You'll be able to recognize many of these lesions through the images I will share later on in the video and identify warning signs that may indicate when to seek medical help. Thankfully, the vast majority of skin lesions are benign, but prompt treatment of malignant lesions is crucial as they can threaten both your day-to-day -day functioning and they can be a threat to your life. Before we begin, please note that this video is not a substitute for personalized advice from your healthcare provider. Its purpose is to educate you about the potential skin lesions, helping improve early detection of skin cancers. This knowledge aims to ensure timely treatment and reduce its related complications. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Finbar McGrady. I earned my medical degree from Queen's University in Belfast in 1999 and initially I worked as a GP or family doctor before transitioning to dermatology after a sabbatical to Brisbane, Australia in 2012. Since then I specialised as a GP in dermatology. I've had extensive training in skin lesion recognition in, and dermoscopy from both Australia and the UK and I keep my skills current through regular conferences, teaching and clinical work and analysis. And while I don't expect you to become a skin expert from this short video, I do offer a comprehensive skin lesion and dermoscopy course for healthcare professionals, which you can find linked in the description below. Let's get some clarity over terminology. When I refer to a skin lesion, I mean a part of the skin that has an abnormal growth or appearance compared to the skin around it. In this video, I won't be discussing inflammatory skin lesions like those seen in acne, the pustules and papules, as they come and go. Instead, I'll focus on skin lesions that persist and may raise the suspicion of malignancy. Regarding malignancy, I mean skin cancer. In skin cancer, abnormal cells divide and grow uncontrollably, potentially invading nearby tissues or spreading to other parts of the body, and that's a process known as metastasis. And when I mention benign skin lesions, I mean they are not malignant or cancerous. However, this doesn't mean that they can't be bothersome or cause problems, as they can still grow and lead to other issues. Now, before I go through a selection of different benign and malignant skin lesions, I'd like to highlight some features which may indicate whether a lesion is likely to be benign or malignant from the history. Here are some pointers to benign lesions. If the patient is age under 18, now under 18s can and still get skin cancer, but it is very rare. If the lesion is of a long-standing duration without change, that's a pointer towards benign lesions. Or are there similar looking lesions nearby? And if the lesion is of symmetrical shape, outline and colour. Here are some pointers of concern. Firstly, know your A, B, C, D, E and your E, F, G. Well, your A, B, C is A for asymmetry, B for irregular border, C for two or more colours, D for a diameter greater than six millimetres, but as I find many skin cancers smaller than that, I like to think of D as being different from all your other lesions. E for evolving, and then E, F and G, this might be a new one for you, so E is for elevated, raised, F for firm and G for growing. Those three together, elevated, firm and growing, as they may represent a fast growing lesion like a SCC skin cancer or a melanoma. Other uh, pointers towards concerning lesion are recent change, change in colour, shape, size or border. If you have a new or unexplained lesion in an adult, and I mentioned this in my video on seborrheic keratosis, how it's unusual for someone to get a new mole over the age of 30. But on the other hand, it's very common to get new benign lesions like a seborrheic keratosis or a sunspot over the age of 30. Some other pointers of concern, including a lesion which scabs, it either doesn't heal up or it does heal and then scabs again, even without any picking or trauma. And this is commonly seen in basal cell carcinomas, a type of skin cancer. A lesion which appears different from all the other lesions, either because it's the only one or it looks a bit bigger or a different colour. We sometimes refer to them as the ugly duckling lesion. Personal history of skin cancer or a family history of skin cancer raises the suspicion. And if you have a lot of moles, particularly if they are of different shapes, sizes and colour. Fast growing lesions 
think some squamous cell carcinomas or nodular melanomas can go quite rapidly in a matter of weeks. Other pointers concern is in your history if you've had excessive UV exposure from tanning, sunbed use or outdoor occupations um, or if you've lived in the tropics for a long time. In my practice here in Ireland most of the patients with skin cancer who I treat are outdoor workers like builders, gardeners, golfers and athletes who spend a lot of time outside unprotected. Immunosuppression through either illness or medication used to treat inflammatory conditions like arthritis or following organ transplant puts your risks of SCC skin cancer much higher. And finally, patient concern. As my patient, if you're concerned, I will address that in my explanation following assessment of your skin lesion. Now here's a chart of all the lesions that I teach healthcare professionals to watch out for. The aim of the consultation being to be able to confidently diagnose the correct lesion and make an appropriate treatment or follow-up. Let's go through each of these with a few examples. So our first benign lesion we're going to look at is moles or nevi. Moles are benign collections of melanocytes and you can see from this chart that throughout life they go up in number until you're 30. A small amount can occur after the age of 30 to 40 and then they fall away over time. So when you get older you're left with a smaller number of moles and in your skin type, you the darker the skin type, the darker the type of mole you get. And I apologize for most of my photographs are on people of very light skin and that just reflects the population that I have coming to my practice here in Northern Ireland. Uh, this is a typical patient we would see with very light mole and you see there there's a different shade in the middle. It's a symmetrically arranged though so that leaves us reassured and she has multiple nevi of the same pattern. And the same with this one we're looking at moles which are light brown, they're very symmetrical, normal borders around them. There's another type of mole called an intradermal nevus, skin coloured. Uh, these often start in the face uh, flat brown and then as time goes on they can raise up like this. Here's another one on the chin. And then we'll move on now to solar lentigo and seborrheic keratosis. So this gentleman has had lots of UV exposure on his chest and these are all, these brown marks are all like large freckles or solar lentigo. And commonly they occur on the sites which are exposed to the UV like this one. And on the face is a really common place to see them, but also backs of arms, shoulders. This again uh, is solar lentigo and people get annoyed with these at times because Wearing false tan can get stuck in these and shine them up even more. Their moscopy shows it very symmetrically arranged with a very sharp cut off edge. Uh, again, on the arms and the hands. We're on to seborrheic keratosis. Now, these are warty growths which occur very commonly. I've made a separate video on those which you can link, uh, watch later. Um, they occur all over the body. They occur more frequently as you get older. Um, they can arise out of solar lentigo but often just pop up on their own, even in areas where there's been no UV exposure at all. Their moscopy there shows uh, a different view and uh, there's fat lines in this one, sharply demarcated edge and you see the colours within that include a little bit of makeup that this lady has worn. Again, commonly seen in sun, non sun exposed sites as well. This man has had uh, cryotherapy treatment to his, that's why there's a lot of inflammation and redness around there. Another uh, seborrheic keratosis, they appear stuck on uh, sort of shiny surface at times, but they can also be very dry. And again, it's not dermoscopy, just lovely. So we're on now to hemangioma. Hemangiomas are benign collections of blood vessels, and they're often red from the oxygenated blood, but they can also be uh, more blue and purple if there's deoxygenated blood in them as well. And they're commonly, as you get older, you'll get more and more of these. Now, these aren't the hemangioma that I'm talking about with children. That's a different type altogether. Uh, although they are also blood related. On this lady's face she has one on her nose but this one is a specific type known as a spider nevus. You can see the little blood vessels coming out from the sides of this one. This one looks quite concerning doesn't it? But it's a uh, um, deoxygenated blood in this hemangioma and dermoscopy is very useful for that. We'll move on now to sebaceous hyperplasia. These are like greasy oil producing glands mainly concentrated around the forehead, the nose and on the face and that's them there on the side of this gentleman's face. And when you look up close, dermoscopy is a very characteristic appearance of them. Again, they just like little lumpy uh, skin coloured greasy uh, areas. And the, the concern is sometimes people get them mixed up for basal cell carcinomas. So dermoscopy can be very useful to differentiate the two. 
unknitted dermatofibroma. fibroma. These are like little firm lumps which have been present for quite a while. They don't grow. They're not the EFG. They don't. E they're not elevated, firm, and growing. They can be firm, and a dimple test which you squeeze aside can often see a depression in the skin from the scar-like area. They're due to uh, an insect bite which causes a scar-like reaction. And I've shown some dermoscopy image as well, just for interest, because that's what your healthcare provider will look for, this characteristic white scarred like central appearance. And again, another one. Watch for E, F and G. This lesion could have been thought to be a, a dermatofibroma in the lady's leg, but grew quite quickly. It's a bit different. It's elevated, it's firm, it's growing. And this one turned out to be in a melanotic or non-pigmented melanoma. So actinic keratosis is next. And these are pre-malignant, meaning that they can develop into skin cancer. The more you have, the more they can develop. And they can appear, uh, first of all, like rough area of skin or like these like cornflakes stuck on lesions. Commonly, again, occur in sites of UV exposure. And uh, this man's face, you could See the redness there, a little bit of scale, but also feels very rough to the touch. Another very similar uh, image here. Bones is also pre-malignant, also known as intraepidermal carcinoma. Commonly appears again on UV exposed sites, so it is due to chronic UV damage. And again, this lady has several lesions when I mark them out with a pen on her leg. She's also got multiple solar lentigo, those brown flat lesions on her leg. Both are caused by chronic UV exposure. And this is Bowen's on the finger. Again, dermoscopy gives a lovely image there. So we're moving on now rapidly to the malignancy. So these are the cancerous lesions. Lots of actinic keratosis can lead on to SCC. And you've seen earlier my pointers concern a personal history of skin cancer. You'll see up in this gentleman's temple, there's a mark up there, and that's from a skin graft from a previous cancer. So we've got actinic keratosis, these are previous cancers, and he's got this new rapidly growing lesion on the cheek. I've just marked out the sort of margins for excision for this was an SCC. And again, another SCC, squamous cell carcinoma. Again, rapidly growth in the back of the hands, particularly UV exposure and also immunosuppression. This one could have been an actinic keratosis, but it was a bit red and tender at the base and it turned out also to be an SCC. They're sent to the lab and analysed to make sure that the, the right diagnosis is reached and that they've been fully removed. Let's look at basal cell. Now, basal cell carcinomas are actually the most common skin cancer. It's kind of difficult to see sometimes and you have to shine the light from different angles. This gentleman presented, this is his neck. It was because it was scabbing and healing and scabbing and healing. There's no scabs on it at this stage. But when I use my dermatoscope to mark it out, it's actually quite extensive as you can see in the image here where the lesion continued to go and then it was fully excised. BCC can also be superficial, meaning very close to the surface. And in this lady, you can see them just for the areas of pinkness in her skin, um, often treated as bits of eczema, but she's got a lot of UV damage and the superficial, she's got quite a number of superficial BCC here on her skin. Also in the middle of that, uh, the dermoscopy shows a nodular BCC, a more raised one. And on this man's face, we have areas of actinic keratosis, but also the dermoscopy shows these lovely vessel pattern that you can see the shiny vessels in a BCC. Again, more actinic keratosis, but again, up on his, his forehead, there was a BCC there as well. And in behind the ears, why I'm always reminding people to put their sunscreen in behind the ears, not to forget the backs of the hands as well afterwards. So then finally, we're on to melanoma and pointers to concern was a solitary, so a lesion different from any other. So this man has nothing else in his back and you can see this one is a standout lesion. You couldn't miss it, but it's been there for some time and he just thought it was a wart, but that was a melanoma. Also, they can be more obvious, this very rapidly growing and bleeding and troublesome lesion. They can be flat and brown, sometimes look like solar lentigos, but again, this is where your professional uh, takes uh, over. Now, this young uh, girl was only 20. She wanted this mole check because it was a bit wobbly, and I wasn't concerned about this because it's a very um, symmetrical appearance of a congenital nevus. But when I looked around the rest of her skin, I found this other lesion, which although symmetrical, the dermatoscope showed a gray blue color, and this turned out to be a thin melanoma. So even in a 20 year old. So that's an overview of the main benign, precancerous and cancerous skin lesions. And now that you are aware of the potentials, I need to remind you that doctors and other professionals and practitioners in this field undergo extensive training and can still sometimes be unsure about a lesion. Now this will often lead to a biopsy being performed where part or all of the lesion is taken away for microscopic analysis by a pathologist. 
It's a good idea to be familiar with your own skin's appearance. And this may involve asking your partner or a good friend to help you check hard to see areas like round the back, or you may have set up a couple of mirrors to help. Smartphone cameras are excellent now, making it easier to document any changes yourself. Rewatch the earlier section on concerning features to remind yourself of those. And if you notice any of these or are interested in a full body skin check, seek advice from your healthcare professional. In my practice, I perform full body skin checks to identify any suspicious lesions. However, over 11 years ago, when I was practicing only as a family doctor, I didn't have the training or skills to perform this examination. So don't be surprised if your family doctor refers you on to someone else trained in dermoscopy and skin lesion recognition to perform your examination. Now that you have all this information, were you able to identify and recognize the skin lesion that you're concerned about? Maybe you'd like to know how to treat your skin lesion. Be sure to comment below what lesion you want to know how to treat. But in in the meantime, you could consider watching this video on cryotherapy, which is a very common treatment used in benign and pre-malignant skin lesion treatment.